in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed matthew chapter 7 7 and 8 it says ask and you shall receive 7 and 8 ask and you shall receive and it shall be given unto you that means if it is not given unto you is because you did not ask is that true seek and you shall find it says knock and it shall be opened unto you let's read verse 8 together one to read for everyone that asketh receiveth just stop there so the blessing of receiving from asking is for everyone everyone regardless gender regardless race regardless whatever your orientation the moment you are someone who can ask you immediately become a receiver the gift of information the gift of access to knowledge most people do not know how to ask james chapter 4 and verse 2 Apostle James was teaching us again and he made a very profound statement. He said, ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. James 4, 2. He says, ye fight and war and ye have not simply because ye ask not. There are many people who are grounded and stagnated in life simply because they have not mastered the art of asking questions let me tell you um, my definition of what it means to ask I'll give you three definitions number one to ask means to request information or to request for an answer by saying or writing that's the first thing it means if you want to ask or if you are asking you are requesting for an information or you are requesting for an answer either by verbalizing it or by writing it my first definition of asking the second definition of asking means to invite into or to allow into your space that means when you ask you are giving permission for someone or something to come into your space powerful when you ask it means you are authorizing that information, that realm of reality to come freely into your space. Number three, asking means to inquire the price of or the cost of. If you are asking, it also means you want to know the cost implication of that which you want to have. So there are many people who ask, but all they are doing is just making requests. They have not sat down to count the cost. You're counting the cost. The cost dimension of life is also asking. Is God helping us? This is what it means to know. The people that do know their God, in order to know, you must be meek enough to receive. Number two, you must master the art of asking questions. How, is, how does this happen? How does this happen? The man who came to share the testimony, one of those, those men that came from the East, I was struck by what he said, his honesty to admit. That was the part of the testimony that blessed me. Many of you didn't hear so much, only the amount that the chief would collect and you were clapping. I'm joking. Are we together? But I listened to something that he said. He said, I've been in the faith for a while, but he was honest enough to admit that the things that I had were not producing for me. 
there was a man who made that kind of confession in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw what happened to the three Hebrew boys, he was honest and open and said, blessed be the God of Daniel. Or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are we together now? And he wrote a decree. He was not ashamed to acknowledge. Listen, when your way is not working, stop trying. Provided there are results happening, you must humble yourself. This thing I'm doing, I've been in Abuja for 10 years, 15 years. I don't even have a plot of land now. Don't just credit everything. I, I, I minister deliverance for people, but listen, we are not stupid people. It is not everything that is just demons because there is a dimension of deliverance that is simply a transfer of responsibility. There are many people who don't want to take responsibility over their lives. Adam still missed it in the Garden of Eden. There were no causes. There was no demon. His mother, he didn't even have a mother to say there's anything foundation. There was no foundation from mother and father in the Garden of Eden and yet he still failed. Are we together? You must be willing to ask my way is not working i humble myself i've been doing ministry but there is no growth there is no increase when i teach my people even when i joke they don't laugh they are always angry and frowning at me i think the people are wicked no your view of them is that they are wicked jesus said come and learn of me that means there is something you don't know he has vetted you and said come and learn come and learn Someone you need to in your mind prophesy to yourself that I need to learn. There are things I do not know. Are we together? What is the implication? What does it take to know? Remember, we're dealing with three words. Have I lost you? What does it take to know? Number three. In order to gain knowledge that translates to your advancement, you must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. When the Bible says the people that do know, it takes a lot to be in the place of knowledge. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your energy, your resources to buy the truth. Matthew 13, 14, Matthew 13 from verse 44 to 46. Hear what the Bible says. I love Jesus. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Is that in your Bible? It says, the which a man had found, he hideth, and for joy he goeth and selleth all that he has and buy the field. Look at this kind of man. He found treasure and with respect to that treasure, nothing else that he had mattered again he could sell anything to buy it next verse again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls 46 who when he had found one pearl of great price he went and sold all that he had and bought it apostle where do i get the money to buy the truth you get it by selling the inferior truths are we together? The money it takes to buy the truth comes by selling what else is not the truth. There is a transaction that happens. Nobody has the capital to buy the truth by default. Get my message. I preached it in um, Takorad in Ghana. Buy the truth. You can get it on Koinonia Global. Please listen to it very carefully. I teach there that there are five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Currency number one is meekness. Meekness and humility is the first currency we use to buy the truth. Are we together? The second currency we use to buy the truth with is honor. Another currency we use to buy the truth is hunger. When you do not have the currency of hunger, you cannot buy the truth. 
Are we learning? The Bible tells us that a man found goodly pearls and he sold everything to have more capital and he now bought what he considered his treasure. Let me tell you this, please look up. Most people are not in the place of knowledge because they are unwilling to sacrifice their time they are unwilling to sacrifice energy and to sacrifice their resources. With all due respect to everyone here, I am amazed and humbled at the amount of international guests that come in every week from around the world. You would think it's a conference that is happening all the time. There are people who would travel as far as Australia, US, to come to Koinonia for a normal service. We're not even talking about, of course, every service is supernatural, but not a dedicated service to minister to people. And some of these people, you will be surprised. They would come down to Abuja, and some of them will still travel to follow some of the ministrations within the time. And you are wondering, couldn't they just sit down and follow online? There's something they are looking for. Are we together? And yet there are people who don't even stay. They stay a two, three minutes distance. They just look through their window and once they see someone falling, they say, wow, ah, man is powerful. Oh. And then they go back. And I'm not being sarcastic, please. But you look at the life of that person, there is nothing that, that has beauty and color. Can I tell you the truth? A hospital does not go around looking for patients. If you are sick, you are the, no matter how sick you are, even if you cannot walk, you must find somebody who picks you to the hospital. A hospital just keeps being equipped, but it will never go around. I don't know any hospital that lives from the foundation, going around to every home. We live in a generation where we want truth and knowledge at our terms. Mm -mm. It's the thinking of mediocres. When you truly desire knowledge, you seek and you pursue it with everything within you. Hallelujah. Very, very powerful. You must be willing to sacrifice your time, your resources to buy. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2, please. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, uh -huh, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Three, it says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding. Reading to six, verse four. If thou seekest her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, but he doesn't give everybody. He gives those who seek passionately. And out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. To who? To the one who is seeking as silver. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only no. I'm seeking you as a precious joy. Not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my only no. Can I tell you? Respectfully speaking, there are people who are not passionate about anything. There is nothing in their lives that can keep them awake in the night. There is nothing in their life that can make them forget food. There is nothing in their life that can make time pass without them being... You will not be great that way. There has to be something in your life that keeps you awake. Jesus said, my meat, my satisfaction comes from doing and finishing the will of him that has sent me. Are we together? There are many people who are very passive. If you are passing and you see something on TV, you just watch. Oh wow, I just learned something now. But they never pursue knowledge. The people that do know are the people that seek with meekness. The people that do know 
are the people who are willing to ask questions and never stop till they find answers. The people that do know are the people who are willing to sacrifice their time, their energy, and their resources to buy the truth. Number four, the people that do know are, their, are the people who have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge. That is the fourth price it takes to be in the realm of those who know. You must have the power to value and to retain superior knowledge. Value and retain superior knowledge. There are many, many people who even by the mercies of God, they encounter valuable knowledge, but they have not mastered the art of placing value on and retaining knowledge that is useful. The same Matthew 13, let's look at 47 and 48. Matthew 13, 47 and 48. Please look up. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered every kind. Everybody say every kind. Usually, this is truly the product of passion. When you pursue knowledge with passion, you will gather every kind. Useful knowledge, useless knowledge, knowledge that is structured, knowledge that is scattered. Your assignment is in verse 48. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels and cast the bad away. Are we Bible students? Sometimes you will not have the luxury of having refined knowledge. This is where the gift of pastors who are according to the heart of God comes in. Are we together now? This is why you must value what you are receiving here and any other place when you find a man of God who has walked with the Spirit through pain, through tears, through study and experience to filter out. This is what we do before we come to church. Matthew 13, 48. You, you cannot believe the amount of research and study and prayer and deep thought and contemplation that comes into bringing one message. What you receive is the filtered, finished version. But I'm telling you, classically speaking, if you want knowledge and you pursue knowledge, please go to verse 47. Don't forget it. You are going to gather, media helpers 47, you are going to gather every kind. There are times where I'm researching maybe on the Holy Spirit and then I'm studying and my goodness, you will see some videos with some kind of demonic occultic information. It's part of the price of seeking. If you seek, you will find. Are we together? Some of you want to study about finances and you will meet all kinds of nonsense that you, it is don't be don't be angry in the midst of all that rubbish ask those who mine have you seen people who mine gold it's not pure refined gold that just comes and you put it in your pocket and go and sell it no there is nothing you mine from the earth that comes pure when you mine it from the earth you now sit down 48 when you sit down then you gather. Do you know it takes time and sacrifice? Okay, this one I found now. Let me read this article they wrote on the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a woman with this nonsense. And you throw it away. And you don't feel bad. Sometimes you spend the whole day buying a book. And midway, you have to read half of the book to know it is wrong. Are we together? The cover is excellent. It starts with a powerful scripture. It's halfway. The Holy Ghost will say, no, stay. Holy Spirit, you would have just told me from the bookshop that this thing is going to waste my time. Truly, we live in a generation that does not respect knowledge. The sacrifice of knowledge. Are we together? So, you must be willing to value knowledge. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me show you something. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20. My son, we're reading from verse 20 to 22. My son, attend to my words 
incline your ears to my sayings uh -huh. let them not depart from your eyes so they can depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart 22 they are life to those who find them not those who want them not those who want them those who find them and health to their flesh can I tell you the truth when people do not pay the price to retain knowledge this is why this generation has no excuse to fail because technology has made retention possible are we together there was a time where if a man says something and quotes a scripture that is the scripture tied to your next level if you didn't hear it sorry for you you have to either buy the tape or come next year for that conference but now you can go back you know you are a student of knowledge when a 15 minutes message takes three hours to finish because for every one or two minutes you are stopping has that happened to you a message of one hour you hold on with your laptop or ipad you come back later and on again the fire was too much you calm down you are not in a rush god what are you saying and light will come out of that knowledge revelation i've told you is not just knowledge knowledge is important but revelation is understanding mixed with knowledge are we learning the people that do know a quick recap are the people that number one must be meek enough to receive that's what it takes to know the people that do know are number two the people who master the art of asking questions and don't stop the people that do know number three are people who are willing to sacrifice their time their energy their resources to buy the truth number four the people who know are the people who place value on knowledge and have sustained the ability to retain superior knowledge hallelujah i can tell you retaining knowledge is not the issue of being dull or intelligent is the issue of being serious with your destiny mm. there are people who cannot tell you last week's message they don't even remember honestly frankly speaking sometimes your mind can play games you can forget but they can't even remember any point no ought not to be so the people who know that means if you want an excelling destiny please listen carefully whether in ministry whether in whatever it is it was bishop oyedeko who taught us that when they were about to build covenant university he said he researched a number of world-renowned universities. There were other universities already, but he, he paid the price to study them, put up a panel that understudied it. Are we together? And then at the end of it, he came to a conclusion that Covenant University, he wanted it to become the new generation Harvard. Now there's landmark, and they are all making tremendous contributions. Are we together? Many years ago, I was in Afeba Balolo University to preach. And my goodness, when I got to hear about the standard and some of the things happening there, and that that man was then at that time, I think he was in his 80s now, I don't know, or maybe 80s, I don't know how old he is now. And his passion, he would still come to the office and sit down and coordinate all kinds of things. I had to tell myself, anybody that says it's too much, think again. Some of us are already young, 25, and they tell you, ah, you are tired, you have tried. Nothing. You are not impacting anything. You have not utilized even 10% of the, the, the mental potential that the Spirit of God gave you. Please challenge yourself in the name of Jesus that you will go for structured knowledge and don't stop. A young man who is sleeping 12 hours, you are in the first level of your life. You will wake up towards the last level of your life when other people are sleeping trouble will keep you awake it's not a cause it's because you have not prepared your way before the lord go for knowledge go for knowledge most of the time people used to live a fake life 
would have been used in getting knowledge that produces what is genuine. Are we together? The time it takes to hide around cars and snap and say it's your car. The time it takes to sit down in an office and say you were in London. All that time is the same time you can settle down and, and study in your one room, even with a candle, shabalakatos. Lord, I know that in the name of Jesus, things will not remain like this. And the spirit of grace is honoring your sincerity and your investment. But the people that do know, are we together? Very quickly, let's go to the second word, B. The people that do know their God Knowledge, as powerful as it is, is not enough. Knowledge must translate to transformation. Now, there are many people who know, they've paid the price to know in terms of awareness, but they are shocked that what they know is the truth, and yet it has not produced in their life. Knowing and doing will cause you trouble. Knowledge must become transformation before you take action. Are we together? Please give it to us. There are, you know, many years ago, I was studying particularly about finances. I, I wanted to make sure that I had a destiny of beauty and color financially. And every time I read the books that people wrote about finances, they didn't write the businesses that they were doing. They would just write things like character, think well, value relationships. I said, these guys are liars. What are you doing that is bringing you money? That's all I want to know, how foolish I was. They were focused on my becoming. I was focused on doing. Many of you have been doing for years because when you do what you have not become, life will see, it. there will be a red card there that will be shown you. You are doing something illegal. Are we together? Be strong. Let's look at the word be. The word be there talks of transformation. What does it mean to be transformed? To change states, spiritually, mentally. What does it take? The people who are transformed, the people who become, are those that, number one, those who recognize that you are not yet your best version. The only people who contend for transformation are those who admit, thank God for what I am and where I am, but this is not the best version of me. That there is more. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. Those who will contend for transformation beyond the realm of knowledge are those who will recognize and acknowledge that you are not yet your best version. I tell myself that all the time. Joshua Selman, thank God for how far God has brought you. Thank God for everything God is using people to say across the globe. But be sure that you are not yet your best version. There are still virgin heights and virgin versions of me that are still calling me to come up higher. Virgin levels of power, virgin levels of understanding and illumination. Sometimes the demon that stops your progress is your current level. It's not an attack from the realm of the spirit. Where you are can greatly stop where you need to be. Philippians 3.12 Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. This is Paul. You have to understand the man who is speaking here. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Even without meeting Jesus, he was not a, he was not a non-entity. Paul was a scribe. He was a doctor of the law. Intelligence par excellence. Acknowledged by God. Acknowledged by men, even the enemies of the cross. They acknowledge his intelligence. And then he encountered Jesus directly. And then he spent 18 years in the wilderness of Arabia under all kinds of training. That's the man who is talking. Not that I have already attained. It's like a professor emeritus saying, I don't know much. He's talking to his students, so I don't know much. A professor who has been a professor for 20 years a foremost researcher one of the few authorities across the globe and they say prof sir what do you have to tell us and he says well my dear people I can only attempt I don't know much ah. who now marks the script 
when every other professor who was there was accredited by that one man and yet he's telling you he does not know much listen those who contend for transformation are those who always know that everything I am now is only for now there is still more please give us that scripture let's finish it up is someone learning tonight it says either we're already perfect but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ Christ Jesus 13 we're reading to 14 brethren I count not myself you count me to have apprehended you call me Paul the learned Paul the anointed Paul the great but I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind he didn't say forgetting the bad things that are behind I know you received an award in January congratulations but it's over you will never receive an award for that rem again so you drop it pat yourself at the back and after that you move forward can I tell you forward thinkers are people who they rejoice at their current level of success but they do not stop there they move forward they move higher but this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before 14, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. In this man standing before you is still a better man of God in this man standing before you is still the potential for a more anointed man thank god for the bodies that were healed what of the ones that were not healed yet are you saying god cannot touch them god is true the problem is the limitation of the vessels we have not yet contended for that level you must be honest and sincere and strict with yourself champions don't let their tears spare the discipline of pressing forward When people commend me on what God is doing here in the ministry and across the globe, I thank them, but I know that, um, no, 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 no. We, this is, you, you always hear me say, this is a step out of the cave. Never get to a point in your life where you say, is there anything else? You are dead already. Even in heaven, John was caught up in heaven in the spirit. And when he was in heaven, he wrote the letters to the seven churches and he still had a voice that said, come up here. In other words, in heaven, still come higher. For someone, God is already speaking to you. The version of you of 2019 is still the version of you today because you have not seen anything to challenge you higher. Man of God, there are still grounds, believe me. Man of God, there are still realms of power. This is why pride is dangerous. Because pride is a full stop in your life where you should put a comma. Hallelujah. No matter how powerful a meeting is, if you ask me how was the meeting, I would just say fine. That answers it. Oh boy, so what should, else should I say? Fine. Ten people got up from the wheelchair out of how many? We have to verify how many people were on wheelchair in the city where you came versus the number. We are grateful, but it should not sponsor mediocrity. For someone, God is challenging you right now. Stop celebrating any arrival even when you have not started. There is still, there are many heights. Stretch yourself. Transformation requires a recognition that you are not yet your best version, that there is more. Number two, those who become, be, those who are transformed, are we together? Are those who realize and recognize that changing, listen carefully, for you to be transformed, it will demand you changing or upgrading your references and your models. You can never be transformed until you sustain the courage to change your models and change your references. For some of you, the reason why you are where you are is that the reference you are using is too small, is too low. 
Transformation cannot happen until you have a superior reference, a superior model. Someone who is called into the educational sector, for instance, by the time that person has a degree and his reference is a professor and one who has PhDs and DSCs like a thermometer, by the time you're a master's holder, that is, that is, that is, um, that is commendable. But because your model is high, even when you have PhD, it looks like you are just having a school living certificate because the reference is high. Are we together? If you're a man of God and your reference is very high, your model is high, even when you are doing exceptional things based on the context of your environment, because your bar is high, not from a competitive standpoint. This is, we're talking about someone who wants to maximize destiny. There are many people, if they were Jesus, they will not need to die again. After that triumphant entry, straight, they will go to heaven. That you climb that donkey, that's the end. From that donkey straight, you will leave a mess under. No apostles train, no nothing. The mission would have died within one year. But Jesus did a thorough work, not distracted by his results. He would finish a powerful crusade and sit down with one woman and be talking as if he's not the same person who raised the dead. And never make reference to what he did before. He would not talk to her and say, Madam, I'm giving you 10 minutes and you're wasting my time. Do you know what happened to Lazarus? You are playing with me. You've not heard about me. <laughs> Look at this. When Jesus resurrected, you thought that you would take the time to enjoy and celebrate. Resurrection is not a small thing. You know what happened in hell. As soon as he got up, he said, listen, I'm here for 40 more days. We are behind in our lectures. All of you come together. Oh, you are the one, you are risen, I'm risen. You've seen me, that's all right, sit down. Let's get to work. 40 days, non-stop. Afterwards, he told them, now I can go. When you get to the world of champions, celebration is minimal. Only enough to motivate you and give God glory. And then you fire on. Are we together? So you must change your references. I've taught you here that transformation is difficult without a reference. You cannot become nothing. You need to become something exact. My question is what or who is your reference? If your reference, respectfully speaking, is a mediocre. You see, there are references that when you put, even if you don't go high, you will still feel comfortable. Watch this. Let me go down just for sake of explanation. If, sorry for those who may not be able to see me, but if this is my reference, watch this, this first step, this is my reference. Do I need to jump seriously to get there? Even if it's by mistake, I can stumble there. But can you stumble here by mistake? So while you are here, those who are here are clapping for you and say, what else is left? You must be able to focus. And then you climb higher. And those who are down are saying, this is too much. Uh, what kind of anointing are you looking for? Whereas there are results that only those who are standing here can produce. Is someone learning now? You must change your references. You must change your models. Upgrade your references. Upgrade your models. What kind of church do you want to produce? What kind and quality of believers do you want to produce? Are we together? What do you want the testimony of the average believer under your care to look or sound like? It's not just having a crowd of people. You must be interested in quality. Is someone learning? Number three. What is the implication and what does it take to be? What does it take to be transformed? Are you ready? Those who become and those who are transformed are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Those who contend for transformation are those who are willing to give up age-long, 
limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs just because a mindset has been there for a long time does not mean it is correct Africa we need to trust God for grace we are people of grace and potential now let me tell you when I talk of dropping wrong mindsets I'm not respectfully speaking I don't necessarily mean picking Western mindsets I mean picking scriptural mindsets you can drop an African mindset and pick is a Western mindset and you are still in the same place spiritually so I don't mean getting a more technological error that's not what I'm teaching Africa's error may be crude then you now pick and advance a technological error it's still error Are we together? You will never contend for transformation until you are willing to give up age long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti destiny beliefs. Let me confess to you up front that this is very, very hard because we usually are emotionally connected to our mindsets, if no matter how wrong it is. There is an emotional affinity you have towards your mindset. And stripping yourself of that mindset to embrace a new scriptural and superior belief system is almost like asking you to remove your clothes and stand naked. There are people who would rather die than to contend for scriptural transformation. Respectfully speaking, we come, there are six geopolitical zones within Nigeria and I submit to you that every geopolitical zone has its blessing and advantage territorially speaking but every geopolitical zone has its limitation programmed by demon spirits territorially if you want to rise and do much for the kingdom you have to obtain grace from God to put a superior reference that is higher than your territory the, the scripture God gave me that delivered me from the limitation of my territory was John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. That thing changed my life. Sent from God. That means the physical point of my arrival is not really the basis for my victory. It is where I came from. I never came from heaven. I was sent. He didn't say there was a man who came from God. That means my arrival was the conclusion of an intelligent discussion between divinity. They saw the space that my relevance can produce as far as kingdom come. I was sent with intention. When I arrived the earth, my parents gave me a name. Lovely name, by the way. May God bless them. They are watching. Next verse, verse 7. The same came for a witness. So it tells you immediately the basis of your victory. He that cometh from above, he says, is above all. And I made up my mind that I refuse to be limited by the thinking and the influences that are associated with my region. No. Is someone learning? A young lady was crying and complaining to her mom about life and she just felt that life was unfair and she was shouting and yelling at the mom and the mom didn't say a word the mom just went in front of a, a gas cooker a four four burner the one that has four compartments and the mom put three three pots and put water on them while the lady was yelling mommy are you hearing me life is unfair and in one of the pots that was boiling, she put an egg, e -double G. In one of the pots that was boiling there, she put coffee. Are we together? And then in one of the pots, I can't remember again what she put there. Rat? Carrots, thank you. Are we together? And she allowed it for a few, for a few maybe some time and then she called the young lady and opened the pots and said tell me what you see and she found out that number one her observation was there was fire under the pot 
on all all three pots so they went through the same situation of heat are we together but for the egg that was fragile and could just you know fall to the ground and you would lose it it had now become hard and strong you could even peel the back and you would not destroy it for the carrots that seemed to be very hard now you could almost bend it and it would bend like this but she noticed something strange with the coffee the coffee looked like the smallest of the seeds there and when she put it the entire water had turned to the coffee color and she said all of them were subjected to the same situation one influenced the system and turned it to look like the color the other one became a victim became hard the other one became soft but the other one said i would not only change i would transform the system is someone learning now you can be one of these three some of you were very hard now some of you were very soft now some of you look very small and you're looking at yourself and say small me in such a system learn from the coffee seed it transformed everything there same thing happens with salt you pick a pinch of salt and put it around and turn it and that's it you don't see it again but you taste the food it will establish its presence there even if you keep even if the food spoils the taste of salt will still be there there are certain foods when they spoil they will taste like something else but as for salt it will still be there is someone learning you must be willing to drop age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs number four those who become those who contend for transformation are those who are ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress are we together let me take it again those who become those who are transformed are those who are willing and are prepared to face the consequences and to endure the consequences of growth and progress let me tell you the truth contending for growth and progress comes with consequences sometimes unfavorable consequences but if you really want to be transformed you must be ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.